Hello, first graders. This week, we are going to read an amazing story. It is a nonfiction story about someone who came from Japan. Now, remember, we had read the nonfiction book, The Greatest of All, which took place in Japan, but this is about a real person who came from Japan to Hawaii a long time ago and he did something amazing. Let me one more time show you on the world map where Japan is. Remember, we are in North America, right? Right about here in Virginia and Japan is all the way over here. It's that pink colored island. It's actually a group of four islands that were formed from volcanoes. So this story does not take place in Japan, but the main character or the person that the book is about is from Japan. Okay, so let me give you some background information. This book is called Barbed Wire Baseball. Now you guys all know, or most of you know, what baseball is. Do you play baseball? Or do you know somebody who plays baseball? Yes, baseball is a very popular game, especially in the spring. And this year, of course, we can't play baseball on teams. Kids can't be on a team to play baseball. And I know that that's very hard for a lot of children, especially those of you who do play baseball on a team. But you can always play baseball at home or with somebody else, with family members. We're going to read an amazing story of someone whose love for baseball helped him to overcome a very difficult situation. What is barbed wire? You know what baseball is? And this is the person, the real man that this story is about. I'm gonna show you some pictures, some real photographs of him in a minute. This of course is an illustration. What is barbed wire? Hmm, we see a picture of barbed wire on the front cover of the book. Look at this, can you see it? Do you see those lines, the black lines above the fence that kind of have like little balls, almost like they look, almost look like little sea urchins, like balls of pointed, spiked, sharp metal? Hmm, why would barbed wire be put on a fence? Have you ever seen barbed wire on a fence before? Why would somebody put that there? Hmm, let's think about that. Can you turn and tell mom and dad or brother and sister why you think somebody might put barbed wire on a fence? And why you think this person from Japan is inside a fence with barbed wire on top of it playing baseball? Hmm. I know it's kind of a hard thing to understand, but we see barbed wire sometimes at the top of fences around buildings that are high security, like where they government buildings or buildings that have databases, like information about people on big computers, they have barbed wire around them because they don't want people to get in to those buildings and steal information. Hmm. But barbed wire can also be used to keep people from getting out of a place. And in this story, that's what the barbed wire is for. It's to keep people from getting out. Hmm, what kind of people would they want to keep in a place? 
maybe prisoners, right? Like in a prison, that's another place. If you've ever seen a picture of a prison on TV, there's barbed wire a lot of times at the top of those walls so that people cannot escape. All right, let's find out who this amazing man is. We're gonna take a look at the author's note in the back of the book. This is called the afterword. And an afterword is like extra writing that tells real facts. And usually the author and sometimes the illustrator put in an afterword an extra note in the back of the book, usually in nonfiction books. Well, this is a picture of some baseball players. And do you see that man, the shortest one in the middle between those two tall men, one in white and one in black? That man is the one who this book is about. And his name is Kenichi Zenumora. That's a hard name to say, Kenichi Zenumora. And he was from Japan. He came to Hawaii with his family and then he moved to Fresno, California. And here he is with some famous baseball players. For those of you who are interested in baseball and who play baseball, maybe you've heard of these people. The guy that has the black outfit is Babe Ruth, one of the most famous baseball players of all time. And the other tall man on the other side of Kenichi is, uh, let me see what his name is. His name is Lou Gehrig. So Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth, two of the most famous baseball players of all time. And he is standing right in the middle of them. Look how small he is. He was a very small man, barely five feet tall and only weighing 100 pounds. Now, 100 pounds might sound like a lot to you, but for a grown man, that is very, very small. He was a small man, physically small but he was a great man. And we are going to find out why when we read this amazing story. All right, and there's another picture of Kenichi as a baseball player. And there's one more, well, it's the same picture, but it's a little bit bigger in the front of the book. Okay, so let's find out who Kenichi is and how he used baseball to change a terrible situation into something amazing. Here we go. This is Barbed Wire Baseball, written by Marissa Moss and illustrated by Yuko Shimuzu. And it was published by if I can find this. Hmm. I thought I saw it on the front cover of the book, and now I don't see it. Let's see. Oh, it was it's right on this baseball ticket. That's why I couldn't find it. It was published by Abrams Books for young readers in New York. All right, it's barbed wire baseball. Zini watched the wooden bat thwack the baseball, hurling it high and straight. He was eight years old, and it was the first time he'd seen a baseball game, but he was hooked. Father, I want to play, he told his dad. You're too small, his father said. Too frail, added his mother. But Zini didn't listen. He had to play. The other kids laughed at him. Zini, you're a mouse, one boy hooted. A teeny tiny one. 
another kid called. None of it mattered. When Zini had a ball or bat in his hand, he felt like a giant, and soon he played like one. So how did people react? How did other people react to Zini wanting to play baseball? What did they say to him? Can you turn and tell mom and dad or brother and sister what people said when Zini said he wanted to play baseball? Yes, you're right. They laughed at him. You're, what did they say? You're too small. And his mother said, you're too frail. Frail means weak, weak and tiny. So everybody thought because of his size that he couldn't play. But it turned out that Zini was a giant. He was a baseball giant. What does that mean? When Zini had a ball or bat in his hand, he felt like a giant and soon he played like one. Why did he feel like a giant? What does that mean? Did he actually become taller and bigger? What do you think that means? He felt like a giant and soon he played like one. Can you turn and tell somebody what you think that means? Yes, it means that Zini felt like he could do anything. Playing baseball made him feel great about himself. He, even though he was small in size, he was a fantastic baseball player and it made him feel wonderful. It gave him confidence. Many springs had passed since that first game. Years of playing in the chill of winter and the sweat of summer, Zini got taller and stronger and better at baseball. But still, his parents gave him a hard time. Why are you wasting time with a silly game? His mother asked. You should study and become a doctor, his father said, or a lawyer. But Zini knew exactly what he wanted to do. And when he grew up, and when he grew up, he coached, managed, and played baseball in the Fresno Nisai League and the Fresno Twilight League. He was barely five feet tall and weighed only 100 pounds, but he was a star player casting a big shadow in baseball. Again, we have an expression. What does it mean that he's casting a big shadow? If something makes a big shadow or casts a big shadow, it's because it's big. But Zini was a small man. He was very short and tiny, but it means that he had great influence in baseball. He made amazing things happen and people started to take notice. Even though he was small, he looked big, not physically big, but his, the effect of his involvement in baseball was felt and noticed by everyone. And now we see Zini, he's holding his glove and his baseball. And what do you see in the background? It looks like smoke. It looks like ships in the water going down, sinking. There's another ship sinking and there's planes overhead. It looks like fighting, it looks like a war. And yes, it is a war. It is World War II. On December 7th, 1941, the Japanese government attacked Pearl Harbor, which was a naval base in Hawaii, an American naval base. And this started 
well, it brought the United States into World War II. And it caused a big problem between Japan and the United States. And we're going to find out how that affected Zini's life. And Zini is his nickname. It's Kenichi is his real name, but Zini is his nickname. Zini was chosen to play with star members of the New York Yankees. Remember we talked about um, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig? He led his teams in exhibition games in Japan. He even arranged for Babe Ruth to play there. But that world collapsed for him when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor in 1941. For the first time since he had picked up a bat, Zini felt as if he didn't measure up. So what does it mean to not measure up? Now we know measuring, we use a ruler, and we know that Zini was small or short, and maybe for that reason he didn't measure up, like he wasn't tall enough, but we know that he was a fantastic baseball player. So what does it mean that he didn't measure up? He felt like he didn't measure up. That means he felt like he wasn't good enough, and that is because of the problem between Japan and the United States. The United States was at war with Japan and 120,000 Americans of Japanese descent who lived on the West Coast were forced into 10 internment camps, most in the desert. The government considered these Japanese Americans to be possible spies and without evidence or trials, locked them up, men, women, and children, American citizens, all were treated like prisoners of war, housed in barracks, and penned in with barbed wire. Now that's a lot of difficult language there. But what is happening? What has happened? What did the American government do? Because Japan attacked the naval base, at Pearl Harbor and sunk American ships, they considered Japanese, the American government considered Japanese Americans dangerous. Anyone who was from Japan or whose parents were from Japan. And they took 120,000 people and basically put them into prisons, like into camps in the desert with barbed wire around them so they couldn't escape without even giving them a trial. They just assumed that they were spies for the Japanese government and they were gonna give secrets to the Japanese government. That was very unfair and very, very wrong. Zini, his wife, and their two teenage sons were sent to a camp in Gila River, Arizona. Outside, the camp was bleak and gray and dusty. Inside, the barracks, barracks are like the housing for the prisoners, the buildings that they slept in. Inside, the barracks were stark, empty, with crowded rows of cots and not much else. Families bustled around trying to make a home out of nothing, hanging up curtains, arranging tea sets on foot lockers, piling dolls and stuffed animals on cots. Zini stood staring at the dry earth, which was broken up every now and then by a few scrubby bits of green. In all the brown and gray, with a dull coppery sky overhead, he felt as if he were shrinking into a tiny, hard ball. So he was sent with his family to a terrible place in the middle of the desert where there was just a few cacti and some bushes and there was barbed wire surrounding it. How did Zini feel? What does it mean that he felt like he was shrinking into a tiny, hard ball. 
that he was sad and he felt like nothing. Sending these people like prisoners made them feel less than, like they weren't real Americans. But Zini was not one to give up. And this is what thought came to him. There was only one thing that could make the desert camp a home, baseball. Zini unpacked his favorite photo, the one that showed him in uniform, lined up with baseball legends, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, towering like redwood trees beside him. He had played with the Yankee Stars in an exhibition game back home in Fresno, and he hadn't felt small at all. He pinned the picture up over his bed. He was going to play baseball again, here in the desolate middle of nowhere. What is Zini thinking when he looks at that photograph of him with Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig? What idea does he have? Turn and tell mom and dad or someone next to you what idea Zini has. Yes, he wants to play baseball in the middle of a desert, in this camp where people are being kept prisoner. How can he do that? Well, we are going to have to find out how Zini is able to take this amazing idea and bring it to life. All right, we will continue reading in our next session. I hope you enjoyed this story and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. I miss you all. Bye, first graders.